What is up guys, it is Og here, back with another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some prop paladin tanking and going over some gear that I would recommend for you guys to get even before level 70 so you guys can hit the ground running at level 70. Within two hours of hitting level 70, live on stream at twitch.tv slash Elias, we were able to head over into Karazhan and actually tank Prince. Prince is one of the hardest hitting bosses and can hit easily 5,000 and double hit those 5,000, so easily 10,000 in a global. And so he's really difficult to tank. It took about three attempts, but we were able to get him down. And we only had two hours played at 70. Now, the way we were able to do this was we picked up gear before we hit level 70, so that by the time we hit level 70, we were ready to even tank heroic dungeons. And so from what I've been hearing, you know, some prop paladins are having problems with threat. Some prop paladins are having problems with being too squishy. And so I wanted to make this video to kind of recommend, you know, what gear to look out for, what kind of things to prioritize, and then also what actual gear you can get so that when you hit level 70, you are ready to go. So we're going to have a, you know, stat priority kind of section at the start. Then we're going to jump into a level 70 or pre-level 70 gear set, and then a post-level 70 gear set to look out for. And then I'm actually going to give you guys the recommended guide that I would have for, you know, do these dungeons at this point, do these quests at this point so that you can unlock all the gear that you would need so that once you hit level 70, you can tank every dungeon and even Kara immediately. So first let's go over stat priority for paladins. Now, Paladins are unique. You do not want to make your paladin a warrior. You do not want to go for, you know, strength and then try to get just maximum defense and everything like that because you won't be able to hold any threat. Here over on the right, you can see the threat generation that we have. Fortunately, Prince is considered a demon, so I can use exorcism to get some additional threat. Otherwise, it might be a little bit difficult to hold the aggro, but we are able to hold the aggro because I've itemized to try to make sure that I can do enough damage to keep up. So the way that we do that, guys, is we get spell power. Now, most of our abilities are affected by spell power, but the coefficients aren't 100%. And what I mean by that, guys, is basically that a portion of your spell power that you have will increase the damage of that ability. Consecration, for example, is a 95% spell power coefficient now. It was 33% back in Classic. So that means that over the entire duration of Consecration, whatever your spell power is, if you take that and multiply that by 95%, that is how much your Consecrate will do additionally compared to just you know, the base amount of Consecrate. And so Exorcism has, you know, a spell power coefficient. Judgment, depending on the seal you have, has a spell power coefficient for that seal. Avenger's Shield, Holy Shield, etc. They all have spell power coefficients. Typically, those coefficients are going to, you know, range between about 33% and 70%, obviously with Consecrate being at 95. And so the spell power isn't you know, massive. You shouldn't go for a full spell power build, but you do want to have some spell power in order to be able to keep threat off of the people who want to pump as much aggro as possible. You also want to have intellect because at the end of the day, we use intellect as a resource to use all those abilities. Now you're going to see here that my intellect is basically maximized at all times. Reason being, I'm getting healed and I'm taking a ton of damage. Paladins in TBC and technically with pre-patch as well, get the new ability called Spiritual Attunement. Now what that does is it heals us, whenever we get healed by somebody else, it gives us 10% of that healing as mana. So if we're taking a lot of damage, we're getting healed a ton. So there's a fine balance between taking too much damage and taking too little damage where we don't have enough mana to sustain. And so because we do want to still take a little bit of damage while tanking, we don't want to be just purely tank and just take none, we want to have a lot of stamina as well. That stamina will help us to live through the burst phases, kind of like Prince here. You can see that I have 13,000 health, but I'm able to live even when he double attacks me because I have enough stamina. And so you want a blend of intellect, spell power, stamina, and then you want to work also on the defense. And so defense, guys, you want to aim for 490 defense. That will get you defense capped. And what that means is you can't get critically struck. You can also use resilience because in TBC, resilience also gives you reduces the chance you can get critically struck. So blending resilience with defense, we can reach the point where we can't get crit. And then that is basically the goal that we're going for. So as far as a stat priority goes, guys, you want to focus on stamina and defense while keeping your spell power up at a reasonable level. I would recommend keeping spell power up at at least 200 spell power. That way you're able to keep aggro at all times and then try to have intellect and potentially strength because strength helps you with your block 
as fillers from there. So now that we know the snap priorities, we can run through the actual gear itself. I'm going to have kind of a listed thing down the line at the end of the exact you know, methods I recommend taking and the exact path I recommend taking in order to get all this gear. But let's just run through the gear itself and I'll talk about where to get them. Myrmidon's headdress comes out of Steam Vaults. And so once you hit level 68, probably you can run Steam Vaults. There's a quest giver right by the Summoning Stone in the Coilfang Reservoir. Pick up that quest, go kill the last boss. It's as easy as that and you get this headpiece. This headpiece is really good because there's a ton of stamina and the defense rating. This really helps you propel to 490-ish defense so you become uncritical. Then you have the Strength of the Untamed. This comes from the reputation with Scenarian Expedition, and it is revered. And so one of the things I highly recommend doing, guys, is running Slave Pens until you get 5,999 out of 6,000 to Honored, and that will then open up your reputation a bit so that you can go and maybe do the quest over in Zangar Marsh to try to get your reputation up to Revered. Once you get Revered, you can get this neck piece, and I highly recommend picking up this neck piece. Worst comes to worst, it might cause you to have to run a few Steam Vaults runs once you're level 68 to 70 range and just knock out the last bit of reputation there, but it should be pretty easy to get this. It does have a ton of mitigation though, so it's very good for us. We then have the War Chief's Mantle. Now I want to bucket a few pieces together, and the reason being is that a lot of these pieces are going to overlap how we're going to get them, so we can be efficient while leveling up and also picking up this gear. War Chief's Mantle, Continuum Blade, and Dormu's Tear Time Warden's leggings all get bucketed into one specific bracket. And so in the Caverns of Time, you have two dungeons. You have Old Hillsbrad and you have Black Moras. Those are going to give Keepers of Time reputation and also Quest Chains. Two Quest Chains, well, the Quest Chain itself, is going to give you the War Chief's Mantle and also in Dormu's Tier. As you can see with these two items, they are incredibly good for the defense, the parry, the block, the dodge that you get from these guys. And so they're going to increase your avoidance drastically. That's going to be one of your bigger issues when you jump into heroics initially, is that you probably won't have a ton of avoidance on your gear. And so this will help with the damage mitigation immediately at, at 70. So I highly recommend running a good amount of those instances. How many specifically? Well, what I recommend doing is the old Hillsbrad quest chain, and then the Black Morass, and then four more Black Morass runs. That will give you enough reputation to go ahead and get revered with Keepers of Time, which unlocks Continuum Blade. Continuum Blade is an incredible weapon and gives a ton of spell power, but it also gives spell hit and a ton of stamina. Stamina is really, really important when we're getting into car and things like that because bosses are going to hit hard. And so we want to make sure we're above their damage thresholds so we don't get one shot or two shot. Continuum Blade is also going to give the spell hit rating. All of our abilities, whether it's Judgment, Avenger's Shield, those are going to be spell hit. And so we need to have some spell hit rating so we can continue our threat per second and make sure that we're not getting resisted when you know we're opening up a fight or something like that. And so this little bit of spell hit will actually help compared to a spell crit on a weapon, for example, which wouldn't help us as much. It also unlocks our Glyph of the Defender, which is also from Keepers of Time Revered. And so certain reputation guys are really, really good. Keepers of Time is probably the best. This Glyph of the Defender is a ton of mitigation. Highly, highly recommend trying to rush that. It will take four Black Moras runs after you get the quest chain done. You then have the Time Warden's Leggings. Now these, this piece is incredible because just from this one piece alone, if you look there, you have 57 stamina on the piece itself, plus three gem stockets, plus the 30 stamina enchant, you're looking at one item alone with over a thousand health. So this is a really good piece. Keepers of Time is a really good reputation and on the way you finish off the quest to get War Chief's Mantle and Dormo's tier. So at level 66, I recommend heading over into Old Hillsbrad and then I, rec I recommend at level probably 69 or if you want to wait till 70, doing Black Moras. The bosses in Black Moras are really tough. They're level 72 and they hit very hard. And so there's a good chance that you're going to get, you know, potentially one hit if you're lower than 69. I did run it at 67, had an incredible healer who was able to keep me up, but highly recommend probably waiting until about 69 or 70. You're not going to get much experience in Black Moras. So if you just want to rush to 70 first and then do the four runs of Black Moras, that might be the move because you also need to do it as part of the Karazhan quest chain. So Maybe wait until 70 for Black Moras, but if you want to do it at 69, you can get all these pieces for sure. We then move into some green pieces. And so you might be surprised to see a bunch of greens up here, but all these greens actually come from one location. So in Southeastern Netherstorm, there is an amazing quest chain that gives a ton of experience, and it also gives really good prop paladin tanking gear. Why? 
because this gear has damage and healing, defense, stamina, intellect, MP5. Like this has the things that we want as a prop paladin. And so these pieces of gear are incredibly good to get as just introduction to tanking dungeons kind of gear. Highly recommend doing these quest chains. How do we unlock these quest chains? We go over to Netherstorm, we get the Archmage quest line, do a couple quests, and then we'll be taken over into Southeastern Netherstorm, which is where we will be able to get all of these pieces. For the individual quests, I recommend looking them, them up, but they're all gonna come from one location, except for one which is gonna cause you to kill Annihilator Servo, which is an elite. This Scavenge Breastplate is actually not the breastplate that I recommend, but for some reason, it is not available on this website. So what I actually recommend is the Lost Chest Place chest plate of the revenant so for some reason it's not here but that is basically by killing a fell reaver elite in southwestern nether storm basically you revive it down there kill the elite that's right there some mobs will spawn so you just have to take them out while you're killing the fell reaver and then you're done with that quest it's a really good chest to pick up taking a look at our shield we have the platinum shield of the valorous this is a really good shield just because it has a good amount of mitigation and stamina right off the bat and so the way that we get this is from the first boss in shadow labs and i actually recommend at level 68 farming shadow labs for two reasons one you want to get your lower city reputation two you also want to get a ton of experience there's a lot of groups that are just going through and they're doing the mobs before the first boss and the first boss and then resetting because you can get about 4,000 reputation per hour and get anywhere between 150 and 200,000 experience per hour. So it's a really good farm if you have a really good group of AOE people, preferably a lock with Cedar Corruption, to just blow through those mobs. On the way to doing that and farming that, you'll likely get the Platinum Shield of the Valorist from the first boss. There are other options you could pick up along the way though, but this is gonna be a great option for you guys pre-level 70. Over in an Ashen Dune, you also want to do a Mana Tombs run to get the Flesh Beast Metal Greaves quest done. Flesh Beast Metal Greaves has a ton of mitigation, and as I said before, mitigation is going to be really important once you just get into that initial level 70 grind so you can jump into whatever kind of content that you want to get into. And by farming over an Ashen Dune, you are also getting Spirit Shards, which then can be used to buy the Seal of the Exorcist. This costs 50 Spirit Shards, but if you level up between Sethic Halls, Mana Tombs, and Shadow Labs, you should be able to get those 50 Spirit Shards. I had about 59 once I ding 60. The Spirit Shards also give you a really good meta gem if you don't wanna put you know, the expensive tanking meta gem into your helm before you get a good helm. And that is the Swift Starfire Diamond. That is 12 spell damage and minor run speed increase. You get that for eight Spirit Shards. So Spirit Shards are gonna be really good to get. And as I said before, I'm gonna have a recommendation of how I recommend leveling through these areas. You know from 60 to 70 so that you can probably have 59 spirit shards by the time that you actually hit level 70. So then we get in our trinkets and our Librum. Our Librum will come from Sethic Halls as well. So while we're farming Sethic Halls, as I said before, to get those spirit shards, we'll probably pick up the Librum of Eternal Rest. This increases our damage of Consecration by 47. Now bear in mind, this doesn't mean that every single tick of Consecrate is gonna do 47 more damage. What it actually means is that 47 divided by eight is gonna be individual tick benefit. So it's about seven more damage per tick, which is still very good. Then our two trinkets, we have Dabberies Enigma. This is another quest out in Nether storm it's only i think a three-part quest chain so it's not too bad a lot of people are looking to do it and looking for group right now but it gives you an incredible trinket that synergizes really well with your other trinket which is figuring of the colossus so dabbery's enigma gives you just 30 defense rating right off the bat which is great but then it increases your block rating by 125 for 15 seconds that is about 15 percent chance to block so we already have 18 percent chance to block that will increase it to 33 percent chance to block then if you have redoubt up that's another 30 percent so that's 60 63%. And then if you pop Holy Shield, that's another 30%. That's 93% chance to block if you have this Dabberies Proct, Redoubt, and Holy Shield. All them synergize then with Figuring of the Colossus. Figuring of the Colossus increases your block rating by 32, which is a lot. And then it also causes you to be healed every successful block by 120, and it lasts for 20 seconds. In a lot of situations, you're going to be AoE tanking a lot of melee mobs, which means you're going to be, you know, getting hit a lot. If you have a high amount of block, which synergizes, as we said before, with Dabberies, then we are able to get a ton of healing. 
This is also going to be an AoE farming trinket because if you have a bunch of mobs hitting you at once, you're going to be able to heal yourself up a ton. So I highly recommend the Figuring of the Colossus, one for the mitigation, but two for the on-use effect if you're going to be taking a lot of damage and you just want to help your healer out and keep yourself up. So that runs through the gear that I would recommend getting. You can get all this gear before level 70, and you can see the stats down here. You'll have about 10.5k health which is actually pretty good. This is based on these talents as well, which is the standard talent build. I do go one point into Reckoning and I don't get the spell warding. Instead, I get the improved Seal of Crusader. It just helps our groups to go a little bit faster, but you can get spell warding instead of having these two. But standard talent builds, you also have a good amount of armor. You have 480 defense, which is not defense capped. And so if you want to swap out some of these blue gems for yellow gems instead, to try to get that defense rating up to 490, you can. But in dungeons, the mobs also aren't level 73, so they're not boss level mobs. And so you don't need 490. You need about 485. You also get a little bit of crit chance reduction from the resilience. So make sure when you're adding these two together that you also add in the resilience rating that you have from Seal of the Exorcist. And so if you were able to get to about 487 defense, you would be capped. You would be at that 490 equivalent. And so if you want to swap out some of these gems to try to hit that, definitely go for that. You can see overall though we have 60% avoidance from this while still maintaining 266 spell power. And this is probably the most important part that a lot of people are missing, is that they don't have a lot of spell power, and so they aren't able to keep threat. Threat per second while doing these runs is incredibly important because you're able to keep aggro, and you're also able to burn through the mobs quicker. So make sure that you have some gear with some spell power on it, or else you're not gonna be able to keep aggro off of your group. Once you hit level 70, guys, you'll be able to run the dungeons, heroics, Kara, potentially even. And so here's some gear that I recommend kind of aiming for and you know, kind of guiding you as to where to go farm certain pieces. A lot of the gear is going to overlap still from, you know, before level 70, because a lot of those pieces are really good. Time Warden's Leggings, Flesh Metal's Greaves, Strength of the un Untamed, the Trinkets, even some of the Rings, the Librum, etc. They're very good all the way through phase one. And so you can definitely keep those items. But there's some new items as well. And so I like to focus on the Righteous set. So the Righteous set, you can also get before you hit level 70. I had two pieces once I dinged. But you probably won't be able to get all the, well, you definitely won't be able to get all the pieces because the Spalders comes from Botanica, but you probably won't get RNG to get all the pieces that you could get anyways before you hit level 70. So I recommend trying to get the Righteous set. The four set bonus is pretty nice because you're able to use your taunt two seconds faster, or it has a two second less cooldown, which is nice, but your consecration abilities cost 15% less mana, which is really going to help early on because you're not going to have a ton of mana on your gear until we get geared out. The Crest of Shatar is an incredible shield that actually only takes about six to seven hours to farm. Once you're level 70, you can do Botanica, Architrast, Mechanar, and you're able to get a very solid amount of reputation per hour. We were getting about 2,500 reputation per run in about 25 minutes. So it shouldn't take you too long to get up to Exalted and pick up the shield. It also has two sockets, and so you can, you know, get some more stamina right there. Then there's just some other pieces that I recommend picking up, but you guys can look into each of these pieces. I'll have links to both of these link or both of these gear sets down below so you guys can check them out. Now that we have all the gear laid out, let's talk about the actual route that I would recommend running in order to get that gear before you hit level 70. So you're going to start off doing, you know, Hellfire Ramparts and Blood Furnace. Make sure to not turn in the Blood Furnace quest to hit 5,999 at 6,000 reputation. It's not the biggest deal, though, if you want to leave early. If you want to leave earlier and get over to Scenario and Expedition kind of area earlier, definitely can. Just make sure at least level 61 or Slay Pens is going to be very difficult. At 61 or preferably around 62, head over into Slay Pens. You can do one run of Underbog if you want to. If you do want to do run, one run of Underbog, I recommend picking up Sporgar items. So that's Glow Caps, Boglord Tendrils, Fertile Spores, and Sanguine Hibiscuses before you even head over into the Sporgar area, then head over into Sporgar, automatically turn in all those quests, get the reputation so you can unlock the quest for Underbog, do one run of Underbog, and then Slave Pens grind from there to hit 5,999 out of 6,000 reputation with Scenarian Expedition. Once you hit the reputation with Scenarian Expedition, I recommend doing Scenarian Expedition quests until you're about 65. At 65, or if you want to go a little bit further, that's fine. You can head over into one run of Mana Tombs to unlock the boot quest. I then recommend doing either Nagron questing, Ring of Blood, or finishing off the Saren Expedition quests. Or if you really enjoy Mana Tombs, 
farming mana tombs to try to get to 66. At 66, we're able to go over into Sethic Halls and we can spam Sethic Halls. Now, the first boss of Sethic Halls drops your Librum. There's not really a drop off the last boss that you really need to watch out for. So if you just want to farm the first boss, that's probably going to be most beneficial to you. Not sure though if your entire group will want to do that, but that will be the fastest way to get both reputation and experience and have better chances at the Librum. Run set the calls until 67.5. At 67.5, we want to head up into Netherstorm. In Netherstorm, we want to do the Archmage quests. We want to do that one Fell Reaver quest in Southwest. And then we want to head over into Southeastern Netherstorm, knock out all those quests in order to unlock the green gear that we talked about in our gear set. At 60, that should get us to about 67.8 or maybe even 68. And then we'll head over to run Old Hillsbrad and do the quests in the Caverns of Time. Knock out an Old Hillsbrad run. Then I recommend going over to Steam Vaults. Make sure you get the quest outside Steam Vaults by the Summoning Stone so that you get credit for the last boss of the Steam Vaults. You get Myrmidon's Headpiece. And then from there, we'll head over into Shattered Halls. Now I recommend picking up all the quests for Shattered Halls before we get into Shattered Halls and then farm shattered halls until you hit or until you get figuring of the colossus some people it might take a long time some people it might be first run once you get figuring of the colossus and then you can head out of shattered halls and head over into shadow labs in shadow labs recommend the first boss spam if possible but you also could do the whole instance if you want to first boss spam will just give you the most efficient experience per hour and also reputation per hour that will get you to level 70. Now you won't have the Keepers of Time rep if you do this. So if you want at level 69, you can do Black Moras, but Black Moras is gonna give you like, I think 20,000 experience or something like that per run. So the XP per run is really small. So it may just be more beneficial to get the car attunement done and not waste one extra Black Moras run. But if you'd like to get reputation with Keepers of Time before you even hit level 70, you definitely can go over there at probably 69 to Black Moras and knock out the four runs that you would need. From doing all this, you should have had enough RNG with the few drops that you have, you know, figuring the Colossus, the Librum, etc. You should be able to get the pieces that you need. You probably also got a couple pieces of the Righteous and some other gear that you can also use for tanking as well, including that shield. So hopefully this helps you guys kind of prep and be ready to go into Botanica and stuff like this at level 70, be able to do a ton of damage while also being able to tank effectively and not be too squishy for your healers.